Okay, this is the second module in beginning PyTest. In this module, we're going to get the software we need to set up. Uh, just going to pause here for a quick disclaimer. I'll let you pause your own video and take as long as you want on this. Okay, in this module, we're going to get the files from GitHub that we need for the project. Uh, we're going to cover setting up a virtual environment. We're going to install then the required Python packages that we're going to use with this project. And I'll give a very quick demo of um, you know what the files look like when you actually run the tests. Okay, getting the files from GitHub. Here's the path. I'll put it in the video description. So you'll just go here. Now, if you have Git installed on your um, computer, you can just clone the repository. Otherwise, you have another option where you can just download the files as a zip archive and unpack them. So when you go to Git, uh, to this uh, path here, you'll see code button here. You can either use clone, which I've just described. If you've got Git installed, you can copy the path from here. Or you can download the zip, um, whichever works for you. OK, setting up a virtual environment. Now, technically, you don't have to use a virtual environment with this project, but I would strongly encourage you to. If you've never used a virtual environment before with Python, um, what it's going to do is it's going to, the, you know, the packages we're going to download, they will be installed locally to the project rather than within your Python installation. This keeps things a lot cleaner, more independent. Um, you'll have less issues with things like dependency problems down the line. I'd strongly recommend um, a virtual environment, uh, uh, you know, unless for some reason you, you just don't want to do it. Now, I pointed out in the previous video, to use these files, you are going to need Python 3.7 or later. Uh, now, depending on your system, you may activate Python with just the word Python, or uh, particularly with some Linux installations, you may have to give it as Python 3. Uh, you can do minus capital V then to see the version, and you'll you know you should see something like 310, 311, uh, you know which is the current one as the time I'm making this. But as long as you have greater than equal to 37, you should be fine. Okay. Creating the virtual environment, you need to um, CD into the project directory of the files you've got from GitHub. Uh, then we're going to use a module called VMV, uh, which comes with Python 3.3 or later. We should be using 3.7, so you should already have this. Then you're going to give um, Python minus M VMV, which name the module, and then the environment name. Uh, sort of a convention a number of people use is the <laughs> They also call um, the virtual environment VM, and that's what I'm doing in this case. And if you want to use the project as is, you will also need to do this. I've got some setup scripts, which you'll see in just a minute. They expect uh, this naming convention. So once you've got the files, CD into the project, and then do Python minus M VM VM, and that will create the virtual environment. Now. Activate in the virtual environment. What I've done is I've provided some scripts to do this for you. Uh, they're all at the top level of the project folder. They all start with set. Uh, the first one, which is set VN and Python path dot bat, is for Windows um, DOS batch uh, shell. I've also provided one for PowerShell as well, if you prefer to use that. And if you're on Linux or Mac, I've provided um, yeah, a, a shell script for that. For the Windows ones, let's say you're going to go with just the DOS batch one. You just do uh, set VMV and Python path dot bat. It'll set it up for you. If you're on Linux or Mac, you'll want to do dot space dot slash set VMV and Python path dot shell. You do need this. Um, this preceding dot that's gonna for the curious that's gonna run this in the current shell and not a subshell uh, which you know the environment would be lost when that subshell completes so don't if you're on Linux you will need dot space dot slash that's gonna set up the virtual environment for you to use also um, 
I'm not going to get too much into the project structure I've used, but within this, um, I'm going to set the Python path, which means the Python will be able to find all the files. You, you wouldn't need to worry about that. One sanity check then is once the virtual environment is activated, once you're in your shell, uh, command prompt, whatever you want to call it, you should see uh, in parentheses VMV and then your directory path. So you always want to be looking out for this to making sure that you actually are using the virtual environment. And if you restart the command prompt or command shell, you will need to reactivate the virtual environment. Okay, so we've got the files. We've set up the virtual environment. Now we need to get the Python packages. Um, you simply at the top level uh, of the project, virtual environment is activated. <coughs> You'll want to run through these commands with pip, which is um, how typically we're going to install packages for um, Python. And you just can say pip install. Uh, we're going to install pytest, pytest cov, which is for the the test coverage. Uh, I've included usage of PyLint in this project, um, which if you haven't come across before is a sort of a static analyzer or linter, however you want to call it. It will do some static checking for you of the code, which will give you um, additional confidence, not just relying only on the codes. Uh, to use PyLint in the project with PyTest, there's an additional module, sets a couple of other things up. I'm also uh, asking you to install AutoPap8. Um, the other scripts I'll be giving you will run through, they'll run all the tests, they'll run the PyLint to do the static analysis, they'll check the code that you have for PAP8, which is a Python standard for coding, in case you haven't come across it. And if anything needs to be corrected for PEP8, um, it will it will update the files for you. And the last thing I'm asking you to install is PDoc, which generates HTML documentation uh, from the comments that you have in your Python code. Uh, one of the big issues well, with any software project is keeping documentation up to date. Ideally, if you can generate it or at least partially generate it with a document generator like PDoc, um, at least you then know it's, it's up to date every time the code's updated. So the next thing you'll do is run through and install these modules. There is a readme file at the top of the project which also gives these instructions as well and the previous ones I've talked about. So if you forget, you can just look at the readme file. All right, I'm going to give a really quick demo of uh, some of the things to set the scene for the next module when we'll actually start um, looking more depth in what PyTest offers. So let's quickly um, do a quick run through of the code. Okay, we see I'm at here, I'm using Windows, I'm using the command prompt. I'm already in the project. Let's show here. Uh, the bin folder we looked at in the previous module. Um, the little man computer which we've you know which is what this application is as an example we want to test uh, you can run the built application from the bin folder build where we're going to next shortly is where we actually run the tests from docs is for the automatically generated pdoc html files we've got the license <coughs> the readme file we've talked you know i've, I've mentioned has the instructions. And then we've got the three um, scripts, which will, depending on your operating system, will set up the virtual environment for you and the Python path. And the code is all under uh, LMC for little man computer. Okay, just so you can see what we'll be looking at a little bit more next time, let's go into the build folder. Now in here, we've got this one script, um, build.py, which is Python script. Uh, I'll run it with Python here as I'm on Windows. If, um, you know, you can actually run it with dot slash on uh, shell 
I've set that up so you can do that there. But keep things simple, I'll just run it with Python. So I'll do build and I'll type help here. And we'll see it actually does a number of different things. Uh, by default, it's going to run everything here. Uh, or you can say, I just want to run test, which is the, um, the PyTest tests. If you want to just run PyLint, you can just run it with Lint. Uh, to run the auto PEP8 or the PEP8 format in, you can just run it with format. Or if you just want to regenerate the documentation, you can run it with docs. So what I'll do, I'll actually run the lot. Um, just so you can see how how long it takes. Okay, so let's run this. I'm on a pretty slow computer here. Um, your computer will probably run faster than this. Okay, we've already run through the PyTest uh, tests here. We can see we've got about 2,000, just under 2,000 source lines. Um, code coverage was 100%, zero omissions from that. Um, here we're going into the, the lint check. It found a couple of quick things there, so you would normally dig into that. Now it's running through the auto PEP8, uh, cleaning up any documents that need to be cleaned up there uh, for PEP8 compliance. And the last thing it did was the documentation generation. So one of the things I'm trying to achieve with this, you know, it's going to be a pretty short series, is to just get people going um, with, you know, test automation. Here's an example project. This is how you do it. Once you get the project structure organized, the second obstacle people tend to do is they don't script the rerunning of tasks and then they forget how to do it or they have some other issues and then they get out of the habit of running tasks. So I'm trying to give people an off the shelf example of how you can quickly get going with PyTest. So that's all I've got for now. I'm going to wrap here and in the next module we'll talk more about PyTest and how it works.